Hi, and welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequin Heads into Planters! Yay! So, we're working on um, the foam saver, caulk saver foam application. It's all, the foam application is all done, and now all I'm doing is painting it uh, because I like it the way it is, and I love the texture, but it feels like it's not quite enough, and I want to use metallic paints on the uh the foam to really bring out that contrast and um any kind of patterns that i have so the next step is going to be i, I worked on the back i'm not really happy with the color on the back um i don't like how like jarringly contrasted it is i think it looks too strippy stripy so and that may change when i do the sides but i have a feeling what i'm going to do is i don't like the ivory i think it's too light too much of a contrast between the ivory and the dark, uh, which is the um, the abstract brand or the Sennelier brand of uh, bronze, iridescent bronze. So what I'm going to do is I have another bronze. I got to let this. It's a or it's a bright brass, which is a real nice light or medium gold, I should say, because I've got light gold, and then I've got this brass, which is an in between color from the dark and the, the light gold from the bronze and the light gold. I'm gonna put that brass in between. It's not an orangey brass, it's not like a coppery brass. But uh, I think what it will do is it'll tone it down from the high contrast, because it's the high contrast that I'm just really not, not digging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back around the front. I love having the silver paint on here. I like how it blends and I love this just the two tones on the front. Let me see if I can lift it without anything coming off. I like that two tones. I think that's really pretty because they're similar to one another. They're far enough apart. Last episode I put on the second coat. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around with the silver. Actually, I'm not going to use silver. I've got the silver around the face. I've got the silver down the center. I was thinking about doing these around the sides, but I'm not gonna do that. I am gonna instead take the oddly enough weird version of, of bronze <laughs> that looks more like copper to me. Uh, the copper is even lighter than this, uh, of this folk art brand, but it is, this is considered their bronze. I have two of these and I don't have any more of the actual copper, which is a much, like I said, lighter uh, uh, color of this same orangey, coppery, uh, metallic paint. So I'm going to take this and I am going to let's see which one's softer. This one's better. Get rid of this one. I'm just going to, I don't know about that brush. It's all funky. Um, it is a funky tip brush and I don't like it. It's hard to get an accurate edge to it. Um, so it goes back in the bin for something else where I just want to kind of jam. Somebody was very like, when they were either, uh, cleaning, putting it in water or uh, cleaning it off, because that's what happens is the bristles go when you do that. You jam it into a, a cup or whatever for the water. But I'm going to put this copper, uh, sorry, bronze. It's the folk art bronze, which is weird, because uh, it feels coppery to me, on that first one around here. I'm going to need a second coat of this. And I don't need to get it fully, like 100% uh, not overlapped. I actually want it to overlap a little bit onto the other one, just so that the line becomes cleaner while I'm doing it. And I'm going to want to put this on pretty heavily. Now, as I come down the bottom, I've already finished these cross pieces. So I got to be more careful as I get down there and pay more attention. But up here, except for right at the silver, because the silver's done on the end of it, I really want to get that on there so it finishes it. And then get this up in here. There we go. This paint is, it's a light, very light body paint, lightweight paint. So I uh, have to do two coats to get really full coverage. Otherwise it's very streaky and kind of blotchy. Uh, luckily it is acrylic, so it dries very quickly. Um, <clears throat> by the time I get the other side done, I would, I will be able to do another coat on this. I like how, um, sort of rich this color is a lot. It is not, it's not what I would consider bronze by any means. It's a dark copper. 
and it's I like that. I love orange. Orange is one of my favorite colors. Uh, different kind of types of orange, depending on which orange it is. I love the the iridescent, or not iridescent, but the um, fluorescent, almost fluorescent green. For some reason, I've over the years I've just become enamored with that that gorgeous bright, 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 obnoxiously bright green, uh, like the warning, <laughs> the caution stuff. Um, I love that. It's super yellowy green, um, but like still my favorite color. It's always been orange and brick red. Uh, those have been my two favorite colors and depending on my mood as to which color it is. But I like the orange that I like is sort of that 70s burnt orange. Uh, it's akin to the bur bur burnt orange and that's because I guess I was a kid growing up in the 70s and it just makes me happy to see it. Anywhere that I don't have great coverage, I'm just gonna, I can just add to that as I go. There we go. So I'm gonna put this equally on the other side. Uh, as I was mentioning in the last episode and I've mentioned before, uh, how would we make things look synthetic and not organic? You make everything perfectly symmetrical. Um, or as symmetrical as you can get it and um, sort of mirrored. That mirroring will uh, makes it so that it looks fake or manufactured. Too perfect, right? Too, too matchy-matchy. Because um, <clears throat> things don't do that unless you're a twin, born as a twin, even then you have differences. Uh, personality, physical trait differences. Uh, even the most twinny twins have, you can at, at points tell them apart. So <clears throat> there we go, there's that side. And let's come over to this side and get this side done as well. I can't do, get too close to it because I can't see it anymore. But I want to be careful right up above or at this, this top edge. I want to really cover well. Not on the bottom, I don't really care about if I Get it onto the other pieces because they're all going to be painted um, but i do want to, it to be nice and clean up in that top edge because i've already painted this the silver and i want to uh, keep that nice and clean as i go around and i'm going to overlap a little bit onto the piece next to it so i have great lines when i do paint that piece that um that rope I don't want to get it on it heavy, but I do want to give it some of the tone of this one so that your eye won't suddenly see silver in between them if I don't paint it actually silver. Um, so I'm going to figure out what happy color, there's a little Bob Ross moment for you, uh, happy color is going to go next to this uh, pseudo bronze coppery color. I'll be careful down at these bottom pieces because I've already painted them and I've got them nice and cleanly painted with a second coat. So around the gold, I want to make sure that it's nice and sharp. There we go. How do I do that? I load up my brush. I've got strings from the glue. Load up my brush and put it right next to it and push the paint right in next to it. That way I can control where the paint's going and just be very careful. Now again, this is going outside and I want it to be what? I want it to be nice, but it doesn't have to be what? Perfect, that's right, very good. Uh, I've said it enough times now, so you should have that memorized. <laughs> I do repeat myself as the teachers do. Um, <clears throat> so here we go, this is good. Get that right in there, just using the tip of my brush so that I can control where it goes so that I'm not making a mess of what I've already done. Then I'm going to bring, just load up my brush heavy. I'm going to paint this as heavy as I can with getting away with it not becoming goopy. And it's going to need a second coat, as I said. So, what I can do is I can skip one, go to, this is where it melted with the hot glue gun, so you can see that, go 
going to skip one and go to, because this is not dry on the other side yet, <coughs> another, um, another two. And while that dries down there, I may actually just come up here and I think I'm going to do a copper, this same color while I've got it, uh, right, I think I'm going to do the very top, no, what should I do? I like it next to the silver, so if it's next to the silver, I'm going to do the copper next. And this is already dry up here. So I'm just gonna start where I can be far enough away to see. Really be careful painting it next to that silver one. Since this goes on so light, um, I wanna make sure I get it nice and heavy between them without being gloopy. But so that I, when I do my second coat, I just do it on the, the large surfaces, not in the detailed edges. Now, which way do you go with your brush? Do you paint from left to right? Or do you paint from right to left? Um, I am more accurate most times uh, drawing, oh, pulling paint, painting from left to right for some reason with my right hand. When I'm doing painting on, uh, oddly enough, I use both hands and switch back and forth when I do large paintings. <clears throat> Can't tell you why, I just do. So if I'm going on the top surface, I draw, I, I paint from right to left. If I'm going on a bottom surface, I paint from left to right. It's consistent with, pretty consistent with me as to how I do that and which hands I use or which directions I use with my right hand. Uh, this sort of detailed painting, I would never do with my left hand. I'm not that accurate and dexterous with my left hand to do that. However, when I work on, I'm going to lay her down so that I have a better uh, view of her. Can't get too close, otherwise I can't see. There we go. Um, when I'm working on large canvases, however, I do use both hands and I go every direction because I tend to go and swirl. Um, I'll do some straight lines, but I tend to brush like this. Um, and the different hands I find have different patterns that come out of it, which is kind of my goal. And uh, I work it changes the actual, the actual physical look of what I'm doing. <clears throat> Turn this around so that I can see well. The bottom. There we go. So I need more paint. And then I'm going to... in there. Turn this so that I have it. Oh, that's much better. So I don't have to be reaching over the edge. And there we go. Oh, that's good. I'm going to put a little bit more paint in there. Not a lot of bit, but just a little bit. Because I don't want to waste paint. So next to this, oopsies, I just put my hand totally on this down here. <clears throat> next to this one, what would I use? I'm not gonna immediately go next to this one. Now, why am I not going right next to each other? Because I don't wanna work uh, on the next one where it's got wet paint on this one and um, muck up, get it um, where it's blending. Because in this case, I actually want my paints to stay uh, just that one color and not blend them on here because I want each rope or each whatever it is whatever you might want to call it to be a fully a separate color and that way I can also clean up any edges by painting over the other color Interesting, these don't line up. Huh. I'm going to paint this back and around though with this copper color as the top for here. There we go. And 
and we get the end of this piece that's down here. Two, 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 two. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez Louise. So there we go. That's cool. I like that. I like that. How is this one doing? Ooh, it's still tacky, so I'd be pulling paint off if I do paint that one. So now I'm going to go with my next color and figure out where I'm going to do that. I found out that that bronze is very dark, very contrasting dark to my other colors. So I'm wondering if I need to just keep that for these nubbins in the center and let the rest of it be lighter, or if I do bring it in that I just be really careful what colors I put it next to. So maybe down this, this side pieces, side lines, I'm going to do that bronze. I'm gonna wet it a little bit because it goes on really go goopy. Um, I wanna lighten it up, thin it up. That is better. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Get a little bit more water in there. You know, the danger of putting water in is if you put too much in, you can't take it back out. You gotta let, let it start to dry again. So what you wanna do is you wanna put less, less is more with water, adding water to any kind of paint ever. Uh, it's also less is more if you, you know, when we were using the, the Sculpt Crete, because with Sculpt Crete especially, you don't want to have to wait until it starts setting up because it's literally setting up, it's a chemical reaction. So you want to add very little water at a time in order to be sure you're not over wetting, um, uh, making it too thin. Now, this area, I'm going to use a different brush because it is a thinner piece. So I'm just going to clean that one out. And I'm going to use this thinner brush, nice thin tip, right there. Make sure that's not completely wet. Here we go, and let's use this bronze. Yeah, that's a better consistency. I'll be able to control it better and not have it come out goopy. Um, one thing I do want to be careful of is that, hopefully I didn't make it too wet. No, all right, there we go. Um, careful of is that I don't get it on the other parts, except for where I really need it, because this is darker. And down the center of the back, where I'm doing this now, I'm next to those horizontal pieces, which are done. And I've also got to be careful when I hold on to, this is cleaning this up nicely, when I hold on to the head, but I really pay attention to where my hand is. I know this sounds obvious, but just word to the wise, think. Stop and think as you go to grab it and just try to be sure you're not grabbing it where you already have paint on it. You don't wanna grab the wet paint and ruin what you just were working on and spend all that time on by either knocking pieces off. That's the other thing with this foam fill. You can't be, you know, brutalizing it. Uh, the challenge we're going to have that you and I are going to experience together and the fun of that is going to be how in the world do we carve out or hollow out the cranium, <clears throat> right? Yeah, so this one we're doing opposite land. Um, we have done the other ones, all the other ones, we hollowed out the head uh, where we had any kind of filling in the head, got all that foam out of there before we started working on it. This one, however, I didn't do that. And remember, we talked about it, and it was pretty intentional. Um, this bottom one is actually low enough, so it's kind of funny. It's going up against, <laughs> it's sitting on the ground, uh, or on the, the table. So there we go. That is on there. That is a light coat. But yeah, so we got to be careful uh, when we're hollowing out the head, I can't just be brutal like I've been on the other ones, right? Uh, because if I do these, it's going to totally screw up all the work we have done um, with these tubes. And, um, and they're just going to come popping off and it's going to be super annoying. And um, I will be cursing and nobody wants to hear that. So when we do it, we're going to need to figure out a method and experiment on how to get this head hollowed out 
uh, with everything being in place. I have an idea of what we're going to do uh, functionally to get it done, how to hold it and how to sort of stabilize it, but I'm not really sure it's going to work very well. So it'll be an experiment. Hopefully I won't completely destroy this thing after I get all this painting and spent, we spent all this time together working on this, uh, that I just totally trash it <laughs> while trying to get the foam out of the head. Um, so that'll be a fun experiment. <laughs> and we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, so just continuing down here with the light coat, the next coat will go on uh, more solidly just by nature because it will have the undercoat that it can ride on uh, instead of this slick uh, foam uh, of the put while putting on the first coat because this foam is uh, got a very shiny surface not shiny but like well shiny it is shiny uh, but a slick surface it's really cool stuff I do like it there were sections where I'm like I wonder if I should just leave it raw <clears throat> just the foam. I mean, I actually I may be planning on doing that. I don't know. I haven't, I don't know what I'm planning on doing. <laughs> and usually until I do it. So that's good. So that one's done. And I'm going to start bringing this color in. Um, uh, where else am I going to bring it? I think I'm going to put it next to that copper and see. Well, no, because then it's on the other side of that. Well, maybe I will. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe I should put it on the next small one in through here and do that on the other side. Let's do that. And then I'll figure out the other colors that go around it. All right. So we're going to, this one's a small, thin tube. Um, so this one, I'm just going to add it to here. And... Um, we will keep going with this and then we'll be done for the day when we get this one back on or this one painted up. Got to get close, get careful around that. I've got strings. The other issue is when you take strings off, uh, be careful while you do them because they will make a mess. If they get paint on them or when they get paint on them and you pull them off, that paint will go everywhere. Trust me. That's experience talking, annoying experience talking. There you go, this is going on beautifully. I don't have to worry about it on either side and I can put it on pretty heavily because um, I've thinned it down. It's not creating too much texture like it was on the back, but this is good. This is a better texture for it. And where is this going? It's going outside. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be good and nice. So I'm overlapping to the sides on either side. This will make it so that when I'm painting the other two um, with final coats, I will um, not have to worry so much about exact, you know, doing exact painting. And I'll get a nice clean line. So this is the small one on this side. Make sure when you're holding it, that you are not holding on to something that it was just painted or that is going to come off on your hands. <laughs> you think I have experience with that? I do. I do, I do, I do. So right up at, at the top, I'm gonna to be very, very careful. I don't wanna mess up the silver that I've got beautifully done on that, uh, that top, the, uh, the one around the face. I mean, it's not that I can't fix it if I do, but I don't want to have to fix it, right? There we go. Now I've got that bright, I've got quite a bit of that bright gold out still. So thinking about, you know, use of paint, continuing to use all the paint that I've got, I don't want to be wasting paint. So since I have it out, we'll do one that's in between with the bright gold before I let you go, because it won't take very long when we have time. Because this one's almost done already. That was a quickie. And get rid of those strings wherever I can. There we go. Hey, my paint holder is moving all over the place. 
because I'm trying to get the rest of the paint out of that little paint cup, egg cup, from the 3,000 eggs from Costco. <clears throat> there we go. Actually, I got a little bit of overlap, and it's good coverage, and that's just fine. So now I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me. All right, there we go. I'm going to use this other brush again. That one is too firm. This one is nice and soft. And I'm going to go through with this bright gold that I have that's sitting here. I'm going to lighten that up. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of water. We're going to thin this down a little bit. It's too heavy. It's goopy. And I don't want it to be goopy because I want a nice, smooth surface, right? If I can see the texture of the paint. I love having texture of the paint on some things. This is not a place where I want texture of paint. I just want color. Uh, and I want it smooth, but I don't want it too wet, you know, too thin, so it doesn't cover well. So that's the magic place to get your paint. And that it is. It's nice and creamy, but it's not um, goopy. So where am I going to go? I'm going to do this big guy right here uh, because it's not up against anything that has already been painted. And I think I'll like that when we come back with it. So I've got, I can freely kind of go through, just get a nice thick coat on here and not and have it not streaky because I'm going to have to do a second coat anyway, which is just fine. Get it in between really get good coverage on it. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Da, 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 da. I'm holding it very lightly with my left hand because of what we've been talking about because I don't want to pull off. It's so funny. It's kind of like a little teeny piece right there. I don't remember putting that on, but obviously I did just to fill it in. Yeah, so I don't want to, so these ends here, I am actually painting so that if I can't get there and not get the other color on this light gold tube, it'll it still have the light gold on it and um, I don't have to be so OCD particular. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the other one on the other side, but I'm holding it gently so that I don't pull anything off and so that I make sure that my hands are not accidentally getting on. Oh, interesting. These are different sizes. There's one, two, three there. And there's one, two here. Oh, this is going to be next to the buttons. That's a surprise. I do remember that they, they weren't matching up exactly or because of his hand, because I hand drew the pattern on it. I gotta be a little bit more careful on this one. I don't overlap too much on the other side, on the bronze side. Because I don't want to be bringing the bronze paint onto my light gold and mixing them on here. That bronze paint is almost dry. It's very close to being dry, but it's still wet enough so that it is coming into my light gold. There we go. That actually works just fine. This light gold is a perfect creaminess consistency. Now I'm going to get the ends here of these guys. You have to put it on heavier because it is the open, uh, open ends of the foam, so the open um, pores sort of thing, um, open bubbles on the ends, whereas it's closed because of the way they extrude it. They, I think apparently they do it in a hot, however they do it in a hot extrusion, extruding, extrusion, is that a word? Um, <clears throat> of this foam, so it seals the outside of it. It's got open, open cells on the inside, and then it closes all those, well not open cells on the inside, it's got, you know, cells on whatever, pockets but those seal, which is why it's a good insulator, as it comes out and it melts it all together. So there we go. There, very cool. And that's all we're gonna do today. I'm gonna let that all dry and then I'm going to 
look at it and figure out what our next color combinations are going to be. Uh, I've used most of this. There's more copper. You know what? While I've got you, I'm going to do like two minutes of copper because I don't want to waste my paint. <coughs> I'm not going to do it while I don't have you. Yeah, there's enough copper here to do smaller pieces up above. So I'm going to do this one and do its matching counterpart on the other side. And here we go. I may need to bring a little bit more or put out a little bit more of this copper. Or I guess it's the folk art bronze. To me, it's very copper. That's all I need to do there on that one. Get a nice first coat on there. So this, the next coat will go on heavier. Put a little, little bit, just a little dollop more. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, I don't want it to come out in a big old lot. There we go. Just a small, small bit right in there. I'm going to hold it so that I don't get it all over my hands and so I don't mar what I've done. Make sure I have the ends painted and get that first coat on just of this one, which will use up the rest of the copper paint that I have out here. Now what's really cool that I like is that the under color, if you will, the scalp uh, color underneath is that same as the, um, the turquoise and dark blue and light blue that is the face which I am going to keep that color. I'm not going to put it, make it metallic. So these do have this nice background of the darkness. Um, I'm gonna leave that like that. A little bit more paint on here so I can make it a little thicker. There we go. A little heavier coat since I've got a little bit of paint left. And it's so pretty. I just love how it's, got that glow to it. It's just gorgeous color. There we go. And then we're all going to be all set for the day. And I hope you have a wonderful day as I finish up here, just getting a little bit heavier coat of paint. There we go. Have a wonderful day. <clears throat> be nice to yourself. Uh, give yourself lots of room to grow and especially important is to learn. Uh, always be learning. Always be open to opportunity. Say yes. A lot of people have gotten to the point where their automatic response is no. And uh, me included, I was in that, in that boat and I <coughs> chose to um, change that tune and go with yes as my default answer. And then yes, it's an opportunity. Yes, it's possible. Not necessarily, yes, I'm going to do it. So I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, take a big breath in. Breathe out. Everything's in a better place. <laughs> Put more love out in the world. There's not enough of it. All right. Have a great day. And bye.